Hello, Flash Anime here, bringing you my part two of my spring wrap up. Since some of the shows just, I watched them tonight and they just, you know, kind of ended. So, jumping right into this since I left off last time, I'm gonna do with the good of my second half. The first one would be Murami san, which is that mermaid show, whatever. I th thought it was pretty hilarious. There's a lot of a lot of comedy, a lot of slapstick in that show that's, you know, quick jokes here and there, and it's a short series, like, I think, 15 minute episodes. Get somewhere around there, and the series is mostly filled with like mermaids, and you have a yeti, which is kind of weird, harpy. So it's, I guess, fantasy creatures that are kind of humanoid looking. So it was, was kind of funny. Oh, uh, yeah, you know, and they had great characters. You know, Marumi san the main girl. She's always hitting the the main dude, and just when she's on screen, she's just this ball of energy. You never know what she's gonna do, and that's what kind of makes the series addict kind of addictive for me. Just her interactions with the main guy, and uh, also the opening. When I first seen it on like a YouTube video, it was like, wow, this this opening is kind of crazy. And just like uh, Sinew of like last season, they had like a, a crazy opening. Like, you know, it's kind of funny that these short series have probably like you know, sometimes the best openings. Even though Sinew doesn't really show it on the episodes, but yeah, you can find it on YouTube. And uh, the things, the random things were like. The dolphin hate Marumi san hates dolphins and that thought was just kinda of random and out there and it's, it's kinda of hilarious for me. The other things I hated was Harpy and Yeti, I just felt they kinda of didn't fit the theme. I mean I know they're going for like you know, mythological creatures, but it's like, really? I mean it's kinda of about mermaids, going why they have 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 to have a Yeti and a Harpy running around. I was like, okay, whatever. The hell is that? <laughs> but yeah, Marumi san if you get a chance to check it out. I would, I would rec recommend watching it. It's very, very short. You can probably marathon it in like a couple, couple hours even. If that. Uh, next up would be, surprise to me, most and most people would probably be Akinohana. Yeah, it was like an okay series. I kind of know everybody hated it in the beginning because of uh, animation choice with Rotoscope. Which kind of killed it for a bunch of people. I know that from a bunch of my friends that dropped it like early, early on because they just could not get used to the Rotoscope. For me, once I get pa got past the the artwork choice, I kind of got into it. It was kind of mysterious, and it always kept you wanting more, like guessing, like what's gonna happen next, you know. And kind of like my other series, uh, my last wrap up, you know, I had love, hate, slash for the main character. Um, it's just sometimes you do things that make you just wanna, you know, kind of scream at him or do something like punch him, just or you know, just to get him motivated, but. I understand why he was the way he was, because they're going for more realistic view, I guess, on like, I guess, blackmail. I don't know how you would go with that, if it's even that. Because, you know, in the last episode, she kind of revealed a lot of, with Takamura, she kind of revealed a lot with why she started going for the main guy and all this with him. And, like I said, once I get past the artwork choice, I have to start looking at it as more a uh, live action show. Even though I've said it before and people kind of like roll their eyes, but yeah, I, I see it more as a live action because technically it is live action because you have to act out all these scenes, which some of them kind of made you feel uncomfortable because like it, the faces sometimes would melt away or, or the expressions weren't what we're used to as far as like anime fans. But once you get past the animation, like I said, the story is kind of addictive and the mystery keeps kind of keeps you going throughout the whole series, even though they kind of ended on a weird note. 13. I'm assuming that I'm obviously during the season 2 they, they kind of have to. It's like I said, end of part 1. So hopefully they get part 2 uh, soon because I want to know what happens next. So I might even read the manga, but I don't know. I heard mixed things about both manga and anime. Version. And my last good would probably be Devil Survivor. You know, it's very slow. I kind of don't like that. And, I, and on the other side, no, I've never played the game for this, so for me, it's going to a, a new experience. I didn't really, you know, like I said, play the game, so it's, it was new. And I guess the one thing about this show I kind of like was the opening and ending. Usually, I don't like the ending. I got the opening, but actually, this time around, I like both ending and opening, which are really cool songs, in my opinion. And I guess halfway through the series, I started developing hate for Yamoto because of what all the stuff he goes, he does to the main characters. You know. In this series, I won't spoil it for you, but a lot of characters die. You know. So, 
you'd be surprised who dies or doesn't, but yeah, that's kind of a surprise for me. Compared to like Attack on Titan, you know, this this season was definitely about a lot of character deaths. People dying left and right, but anyway. Uh, the other things were kind of weird that, you know, Hibiki, he was a cool character at the beginning, but slowly you start getting heck, oh man, he's so boring. Yeah, like he's always, you know, fighting for everyone, which I guess is fine. I mean, it's kind of shonen-ish, almost, in a way. He's just helping his friends, protecting his friends, that kind of thing. And, uh, yeah, to me, the show feels like it would appeal more to the female audience, because there are a lot of, like, homo-ish stuff at the very end, the tail end of the series. It's, it's very weird. I mean, you have Yamato and Hibiki at the very end of the episode. It's kind of like, I know they're going for a friendship thing, but, you know, I, I could tell what they're doing. <laughs> Obviously, they're aiming for a female audience for this, for this series. Other random notes would be like Nita, her chest. I'm like, what the hell? This is, you know, weird. I get it, she's a fan service character, but it's kind of, kind of crazy. Whatever. And besides those three, I mean, the whole cast is pretty interesting. I like that. In the ending, I guess, I don't know. It's kind of hard to spoil, but I won't say anything about it. The ending is kind of. I think everyone could see the ending coming a mile away. I mean, obviously from the last. Two episodes, you kind of know what's gonna happen. But anyway, and now for the bad. Uh, this was kind of hard one because most, I mean, this next show it was kind of fun, but also kind of boring at the same time. I uh, went with Crime Edge. You now it, it had a cool, interesting idea. You know, the idea of weapons that are from killers in the past that you know you can't destroy, and it turns you kind of into the original killer. It was kind of a cool idea. I like that. I like they kind of put that in there, but yeah, at the same time, I was just like watching it. And it's like, you know, certain episodes where you have the main guy running with scissors in his hand, so I'm like, oh good, you're teaching kids to run with scissors. Awesome. Good job, anime. <laughs> the other standout thing would be the OST. If you're familiar with like Naruto, I think Naruto Shippuden, I think is what this guy did. He also did fairy tale and a lot of like uh, Precure, which is Magic Girls. And their OSTs are kind of like, I would say, I almost say like Irish music a little bit. I mean, if you heard fairy tale music, the, sa the soundtrack for Crime Edge is probably gonna be the same thing. It's got a lot of the same instruments and stuff like that. And for a like a bloody show, with a lot of action, a lot of fighting, this show has a lot of fan service. Just surprised now. I'm like, okay. If you watch episode 13, you, you will probably understand why I said that because there's like a whole five, ten minute bath scene between the main girl and some little wally girl so it's like i could tell where if they put the blu-ray out for the episode it's gonna sell a lot of freaking copies just because it's fan service i don't know a lot of sunbeam they can edit out but yeah fan service is kind of weird also the undertone uh, sexual undertones for this series every time the guy cuts the main girl's hair she kind of like you know moans and everything and it's kind of very sexual in nature it's kind of like ugh weird and there's a lot of other fetish stuff in there. You got like people that like ain't, like S and M stuff. People getting beat with whips and stuff. It's very strange. And uh, the blood, like I said, it's very bloody. And yeah, especially the last episode. It's like a episode or a part where he he's like in berserk mode. And he's like, scissors. He's like cutting the girl's hair very violently, and she's like, "Oh, you violated my hair." It's was stupid. I didn't just thought it was kind of dumb how they they kept putting that in there. And last in my bad, Hayori and yaku -san Season 2, which, this anime is kind of a reference anime, it, re it, re it re relies on a lot of, like, anime references or jokes, which range from, like, Kamen Rider, which is, I know it's not really anime, but it's it's in there, uh, Gundam, Macross, JoJo's Bizarre Adventures, it's in there. Uh, so, and most of it's, like, based off of HP Lovecraft, if you're familiar with any of that. And with this season, I kind of felt they ran out of ideas very fast because there are certain episodes that didn't have any references at all like it had some but just not a lot compared to season one and it just shows me like I said that the creators just ran out of ideas I just don't know what else to do with this series and honestly I feel it, d it did not need a season two because it's just kind of bland and the only thing they really added was like Kuko the redhead she had a cousin that would have like you know liked her and wanted to get with her a little bit of incest. Uh, love triangle with Kuko, Nyarko, and Ma Mahiru. Like, 
all four three of them, because the redhead uh, starts developing feelings for the main character, which is kind of weird. I don't know why. And yeah, I don't think they would do the season three. I hope they don't because I don't know what they could do with it. The only thing I can see is like a Agami SS style where it's the main guy he gets with all the characters, even the little little kid, because you know BL would probably boost shit sell up and sells for for the girls. I honestly think. But yeah, it's just me. But anyway, that's been my wrap up for part two. I think that's about all the shows I'm gonna do on these. Because uh, Attack on Titan, uh, Majestic Prince, Railgun, all those three are continuing through through the summer. So I'll probably talk about those when the summer wraps up. But anyway, it's been Flash Anime. Check you guys later. Peace.